Okay, so in this tutorial, I've created a new file um, because I wanted to hide this monstrosity that I made in the previous tutorial. <laughs> um, but I want to talk about how you can customize brushes in Photoshop. So um, one of the things that you can do is first I want to go, instead of using the mixer brush, I'm just going to use the standard brush. Um, and right, we've talked a bit about how you can adjust the angle and the width of the brush, right? So if I have it like this, right, I, and I make a mark across here, I've got it set that way. If I rotate this down, right, then, you know, that's probably a bad example. If I rotate it like this, then when I do this, right, it's a little bit different. Um, and so, right, there's, there's those simple changes, but there's a lot of other changes I can make to brushes as well. If I go over here to this brush settings option here, and select this, you'll see that there are all of these brush tip shape options that are available. And this gives you a preview of what the brush looks like currently. Um, spacing determines, right, and this kind of tells you how brushes work in Photoshop, right? The spacing, all it's doing is it's drawing a circle or whatever shape, it's sort of stamping those over and over and over again. And if your spacing is, you know, really close, then you're gonna have it's a, you know, in this case, it's a heavier mark, but it's also a much smoother mark. So if I zoom in here, you can see that, right, with this, it's dark and smooth. If I increase my spacing to 100, right, then I actually get individual little circles that are being drawn, right? So, um, and 25% was the default for this one, right, which allow, which see, you can see those independent little circles, right? So ideally, depending on what you're working on, this might be a really nice effect, but you might want the spacing to be, right, significantly smaller. And then, you know, 0% or 1% is gonna be the smoothest, cleanest looking brush you can get. Okay, so you'll notice, like, you've got the angle and the roundness. You can adjust these, you can flip your X or flip your Y, and that's going to adjust how that looks. There's size here. There's your hardness and your spacing, as we talked about. And then up here are all of the possible brushes. And you can see, right, we've got a ton of options here, including, apparently, we can draw Saturns. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> um, if I make it a little bit bigger. Uh, yeah. We can draw Saturns. We don't need to be drawing Saturns or anything right now. Um, so, all right, so there's plenty of options up here. So I'm going to go ahead, and whenever I, if I choose a brush here, like if I grab this one, it's going to grab it there, and it's going to show me what different settings I can adjust. And so right now I'm on brush tip shape, which is those default settings that you can access up there. If I click on the shape dynamics, you'll see that I have a lot of options here. And I should be able to see this brush. Yeah, let me go ahead and select all and just delete this. And I'm not gonna do content aware, I'm just gonna say, ooh. Uh, let's do foreground color, yeah. So I just did this so that it's nice and dark blue, and then I'm just gonna change the color um, here to be like a lighter color so we can see that well. Okay, great. So now I wanna make sure that I'm gonna increase my flow to 100% um, because, and I'm gonna turn off a couple settings here um, because I just want this to be its default state, right? So there we go. So that's what it looks like when it's totally on its own. Note that when I unchecked this option, this transfer, check marked or uncheck marked. And when I unclicked this, my brush dynamics turned on and off. So, or my shape dynamics. So shape dynamics allows me to control all sorts of things. So one of the things I can do is size jitter, right? And if I have this controlled by pen pressure, then the harder I push, the more, the more various these, each one of these strokes are, are right? Remember, the way that this works is it basically copies and pastes, copies and pastes, or just pastes it over and over some little image, basically, or a shape, um, in order to make the stroke. 
And so what it does is it changes the sizes of those. So if I do something like, if I actually do select this, um, the, uh, uh, what's it called? And I increase, I go to brush tip shape and I increase my size to something noticeable and go to shape dynamics and increase the size jitter, you'll see that what it does is it sort of randomizes the size of these. Now, I want to make sure that this, right, so you can see as I'm drawing this, you know, this looks terrible, but, right, they're kind of going all over the place. And this isn't pressure, you know, I have, my pen pressure is controlling what size they are and how much that jitter, how much that size varies from image to image, right, which can, makes for some really nice, um, Thing. So I'm going to reduce that back down to zero. And then that just means that, right, if I press harder, it will be bigger. If I press lighter, they will be smaller. But, right, they also um, do something else. I'm going to turn this off. I don't know why that's on. Right, so there we go. Okay, let's go back to a more standard brush like one of these. So the other things we can look at is scattering. And scattering, you can see what it does in that preview there as you pull this up, right? It, it breaks this up a little bit. So in this case, it makes the brush stroke much broader and more almost like a sponge or like a bigger crayon, um, right? So scattering count um, basically increases like, you know, how dense should this thing be, even though it's scattering. And then count jitter makes that more or less random. And there's different ways you can control some of these settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off pen pressure for anything. And I'm gonna choose a color that's really vibrant off of everything that's back here. And then what I want to do is I wanna say, okay, with the scatter, let's make it really huge. I'm gonna do it in just in one axis. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to fade. You'll see that there's all sorts of different potential options on here. Um, but if I click on fade, and fade, set fade to 25, then what that means is, right, you can see it's the jitters all over the place and then it's nothing, right? And so what I wanna do, if I make that bigger, like let's say make it 100, then when I come in here, right, I'm gonna get that size jitter. If I go to shape dynamics and I turn this on and I say um, size jitter, I can make that fade as well, right? And then increase this, pretty high and for some reason oh fade set to one that's probably the problem I need that to be set to like a hundred and my minimum diameter I should make a little bit bigger than one let's make it minimum diameter let's set to 50 percent so then right you can see that it right it starts out thick and then it it tapers and gets thin really really quickly Okay, this one actually has this dual brush, which basically means it's got um, a texture brush and then another brush that controls the shape. And we're not gonna worry about that too much right now. And then transfer um, basically is your opacity and how that works. So um, let's go back to our, oops, let's go back to our brushes and let's just find something else that we can look at and work with. Let's go to, I don't know, pencil thick. So with this, there's nothing set. If I turn on shape dynamics, right, and you'll note that, um, and I say, okay, well, let's do this to pen pressure, right? Now, the lighter it is, right, and the thinner it is. And if I, again, was to set this to fade, right, and make this fade um, 100, and set the minimum diameter to 0% like that, then when I do this, right, it goes 100 pixels and it fades. So I don't need my, you know, this allows me to create, you know, a brush shape like this without the, without the need for um, a tablet or something to control that, right? If I want it to be longer, I just say make it, okay, 1,000, then, right, then I get a much longer stroke before it fades out. Right, so even though this isn't as great as, um, you know, being able to control that with the pressure on your, on your stylus, um, you can basically use this to create a brush stroke that gets thinner and thinner over time. Okay, so let's go to something yellow.
Ooh, look at that gold. Okay, all right, so there's a bunch of other options in here and you can go through and, you know, see what each one of these does. If I select wet edges, um, there isn't really a setting for that, right? I can't click on this and actually get it set, but what it does is it essentially makes this transparent with like a little bit, with the edge a little bit thicker and more opaque than the center of the stroke. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. Build up, um, right? That means if I, um, I believe that's just if I sit in place, let's go ahead and turn wet edges off and put build up on. Um, it should get denser, but then I'd have to, I have, that means I have flow on, but my flow is at 100%, so let's drop that to 45. There we go, right? If I, so if I have my flow set a little lower, then it just, um, oops, it just slowly, it does that, that flow thing, right? That build up. Um, smoothing, if I turn that on, then this option is here and right now there's 10% smoothing. So if I zoom in, this is probably something I'm going to have to be really close to see. Um, if I increase this smoothing to 100%, you'll see that it takes a lot longer to draw, <laughs> right? Because what it's doing is it's really softening and you can kind of see the edges here where it softens and it smooths those edges out um, pretty intensely, right? Some brushes already incorporate that. Um, there's even these options here, which is, right, there, there's a couple different ways you can do this, right? Stroke catch up is the default, which is what it's doing where, right, it's not in real time. It's catching up after I make the mark. Um, if I go to pulled string mode, then what happens is, oh, there we go. So you can kind of see, right, I've got this big circle. So I click, and then when I hit my brush hits the end of this edge, it pulls it around, right, which is an interesting way of making marks. It's a really nice and smooth way to do it, something you might think about. Um, and it said adjust for zoom, and then catch up on end stroke. So what that's doing is it's, as I'm making the mark, right, it's going slow and then it catches up as soon as I release it. All right, so these are some of the settings that we've got. Now, one last thing I didn't talk about was this is a newer <laughs> feature, which allows us to do symmetry. So if I, create a new layer and maybe hide the existing layer. Um, if I turn symmetry on, I can just say, which way do I want it to be symmetrical? Vertical, horizontal, dual axis, wavy, blah, 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 radial, mandala, etc. So let's try vertical first, right? So here's where this is. I can make some adjustments um, to the shape of this thing. So maybe I Right, because that just basically allows me to choose where that line of symmetry is. I'm just going to check mark. And now when I paint on this side, it should do the exact same thing on the other side. And if I cross over, right, I can create some really nice symmetrical forms with this. So I've done vertical symmetry. So let's see what we can do with, um, right, so horizontal. Right, maybe I'll do a different brush stroke so we can, so each of these, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and check mark that. Right, that's the big thing is you have to set it before you go any further. So now I'm gonna use purple, and if I just, right, horizontal symmetry, that's really handy. Um, let's go ahead and look at dual axis, and we'll do that in a nice vibrant green once we say okay. Um, right, so you can choose where on the image you want that symmetry to happen. I'm just leaving most of these at the default. Um, but so now if I do this right, it's actually four copies. Which again makes for really nice symmetrical drawings, as would one would hope. Spiral, this should be really interesting. 
Um, let's go ahead and do, oh yeah, I always forget. Okay, let's go ahead and do the sky blue. And maybe before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and go layer, new fill layer, solid color. Okay, Ooh, not blue, let's do white. And then I'm just gonna pull this down here, there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to select layer one. And now that I've got that, right, it's gonna be symmetrical around this spiral, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's keep going through these. Um, so then parallel lines, that makes sense. Um, I'm not gonna do that one, but radial um, and mandala, if I go to radial, right, the number of segments are in there. So I'm gonna say, I don't know, let's just leave it at the default of five. And so then when I do this, um, I check mark the thing and, oh, I should choose a different brush color. Let's do a red, All right? So you can see again, how this allows me to paint radially. That's pretty awesome. And let's see what the mandala looks like. The mandala, I'm gonna do four segments and hit okay. I'm gonna check mark this. And again, let's choose a different brush color. Uh, I haven't done like a really vibrant green yet, so let's do that. And so you can see that this is a little bit different um, and kind of amazing. And right, I've been starting at the middle, but there's no reason why you can't start somewhere else. All right, so this is a really, um, you know, it's a great set of tools for doing symmetrical drawing and painting. Okay, so we've looked at several of the options we hadn't covered in the previous tutorial. Again, some of these things are not going to work unless you've got a tablet. Um, but you can go ahead and experiment with all of them. Oh, if you have a brush that you end up really liking, like you've set all of these settings and you're really happy with that brush, if you click on this plus sign, then you create a new brush based on what you've set here. And so I'm just gonna call this um, pencil, um, and I'm just gonna use my name so it's obvious um, where it's at. Maybe it says capture brush size and preset. If I want it to be de to default to this brush size, I can do that. Otherwise I can just say, okay. And you can also choose, leave the color on there as well. But so now you see in my brushes, I now have this pencil Austin, right? And so that's my, um, my new brush color that I've made. Okay. And so this has been um, a tutorial on some more brush settings and and how to save a custom brush.